As our initial video on Saturday suggested, not much of the B-21 Raider bomber was shown at its unveiling, but certain descriptions of it were disclosed during its development and the unveiling event. This video will measure the plane, stack it up against the B-2 and analyze its use in a potential war. The US Air Force wasn't shy of labeling China as their adversary, so would the Raider be the right weapon in such a war? Watch the video to find out. We'll get on with the new bomber soon enough, but allow us a bomb-like announcement coming from our friends over at Unity of Command 2. This well-reviewed PC strategy game is releasing its newest DLC this Thursday, Desert Fox. In it, you get to command the German and Italian troops, stabilize the front, reach Suez and even further. A Unity of Command 2 offers both historical accuracy and alternate history battles enabled by your commanding prowess. I love the logistics supply system and managing the right attack combos. A whole bunch of campaigns are available for the game. I especially recommend the massive Barbarossa DLC. Click on the link in the video description available below to get unified with your inner commander. Back to B-21 Raider. While the bomber does look a lot like its predecessor, the B-2, differences are visible. Cabin and fuselage section is more blended into the wing. That could be said for the engine intakes as well, but it would be an understatement. The intakes on the B-21 seem as if they are almost buried into the wings. If true, they might be similar to the buried intake on Northrop Tacit Blue Demonstrator. Of course, here a part of the intake is visible from the front as well. Air ingestion at various angles of attack during flight is too important, so the intake is a blend of a more normal intake and a buried one. But all those details suggest the radar cross-section of the plane was lowered even more than on the B-2. And that's just by shaping alone. The rear of the plane wasn't shown, but the official artist renders suggest that it is also cleaner and thus more stealthy than on the B-2. Of course, the shape itself can't be improved as much as materials can. Over the years, Binkov has mentioned how much radar absorbing materials have advanced. Compared even to modernized coatings used for B-2, the new advances are likely a generation or two better. Various Northrop Grumman officials, including their CEO, have also pointed towards great advances in stealth and materials. The material advantages are also important for maintenance, as that can directly translate into the number of sorties generated, and thus into bomber unit presence and persistence over the battlefield. A US general described Raider as a high-cycle aircraft, while another Northrop Grumman official said the B-21 is designed to fly every day, as opposed to the B-2, which requires hundreds of man-hours of maintenance between missions, due to the needs of its old Raider absorbing material coatings and tapes. Of course, the exact Raider cross-section will likely not be known for decades, if ever. But if it was lowered by an order of magnitude compared to what B-2 can offer, we might be talking about radars not being able to detect the radar until well within the range of dropping a simple JDAM bomb. Because even such bombs, when dropped from high altitude, can still cross over 18 miles. Mind you, that's range without any winged glider kit or propulsion. Indeed, US officials, including the Secretary of Defense, have not been shy of making similar though more vaguely worded points. Of course, that's just the current US opinion. No one can really predict how capable adversary radars will be in 20 years' time. Indeed, radars have evolved alongside stealth technology, rendering some of the earlier planes, like the F-117 Nighthawk, nearly useless, and prompted replacement and soon retirement of even the B-2. B-21 most likely has a whole host of sensors hidden under its advanced skin, something the technology of the day did not allow for B-2. US officials touted its multifunctionality as well. It may very well be it will have a limited ability to search for and designate targets for itself. So is the B-21 better in every regard than the B-2? Well, for one, it's smaller than the B-2. So in some ways it may not be quite as comparable. For one, plane's wingspan is shorter. There are several ways to go about estimating the wingspan, but using every single one of these comparisons points to a similar figure using the height of people around it, using the width of the tug vehicle, using the standard width of concrete slabs on the airbase, and using the known width of the hangar door, compared to the plane's wingspan. Those all point towards 130 to 135 feet, but that's width projected at the landing gear line. Actual wingtips are positioned further back. Due to wide camera lenses used, 
actual wingspan is likely greater than that, likely to be between 140 and 150 feet, give or take. The B-2 has a wingspan of 172 feet, or 20% greater. A telling thing is the fact that Raider uses four tires for its main landing gear. Those seem roughly similar in size to B-2 tires, but the B-2 uses eight such tires. While not all planes exert exactly the same ground pressure, they can't veer too much off a baseline. So the B-21 is bound to have a lower max stake of weight than the B-2. It doesn't have to be half its weight, but even using the B-1B's ground pressure, it may not go over 240,000 pounds. Given the smaller wingspan though, it is understandable weight would be lower. There are also other weight factors involved. Newer construction methods may have made the plane's structure lighter. The Raider most likely uses just two engines, compared to B-2's four. While it is not known for sure, the most rumored choice is the F-135 engine. The base engine is used on the F-35, but for the Raider it would be modified. For one, the Raider has no use for supersonic speeds. Its engine won't use an afterburner. Plus there were a number of advanced programs explored, making the F-135 engine even more fuel efficient. The EATP program achieved a 25% fuel consumption reduction, compared to the base F-135 engine. If indeed the B-21 engine can achieve 25% lower fuel consumption over a B-2 engine, then the weight of the fuel carried would be lower. Plus the weight of the plane would also be affected, as not as much structure would be needed to hold that extra fuel. Finally, the B-21 being lighter needs less thrust, meaning less fuel consumed. Though there are caveats as well, which are impossible to estimate. If a two-engine design, the Raider may need extra thrust over the baseline in case of an engine loss. We also don't know how the engine exhaust is really done. The 3D render we use in this video is not necessarily accurate in that regard. For example, engine's infrared signature reduction may lead to added thrust loss. One engine loss situation might be mitigated if both exhausts were joined centrally, but that too would involve thrust loss. So the additional 25% savings in fuel carried, due to less thrust needed, may not be fully realized. It's simply too early to guess all that before we have some images of the top back end of the plane, if those ever come. But a lot points towards the possibility that the Raider either has almost similar range to B-2, with just half of B-2's fuel carried, or perhaps it even matches the B-2 range with two-thirds of its fuel. The B-21 is made to be more deployable than the B-2, so it will sometimes be based closer to the battlefield. After analyzing Raider's size more closely, Binkov believes Raider doesn't seem to be much more range constrained than the B-2 after all. US officials corroborate that, saying B-21 would not need to be based in theater. Of course, basing the planes in theater would likely be done in a war when possible. Less flight time means quicker reaction, and more missions in a given time frame. For example, a mission from Brisbane to Shanghai might require 15 hours fewer compared to one flown from Missouri, current B-2 main base location. If one remembers what we said earlier, the Raider will be a high-cycle bomber. So if one couples less maintenance between missions needed with less flight time needed, the actual number of missions achieved might be quite a bit more than that of the B-2, possibly even by a factor or two or three. And on top of that, there are going to be many B-21s made. Unlike the B-2, which was a shoot for the moon kind of a design, the B-21 is largely the opposite. It uses mostly tried and tested ideas. Its development is smooth and fairly quick, and it managed to come in below budget, both in R&D budget and low-rate production budget. That's something that almost never happens with the US military projects. Research and development costs are coming in at 13 billion from 2022 throughout 2027. Total development costs have to include prior years as well though. Those low-rate production planes are coming in under the 550 million limit in 2010 dollars, and they were contracted as a fixed-priced item, which would now come to nearly 750 million, so the actual cost per plane is less than that. There's also a 2020 Congressional Budget Office estimate. It projected the cost of one B-21 with a load of 10 future generation standoff cruise missiles to be 500 million dollars, with the sustainment cost of that package being 40 million per year. Full-rate production costs still have to be negotiated, though. Another notable official document came this April, when B-21 procurement funding request became known. From 2022 to 2027, 
US Air Force is asking for over $19 billion for procurement alone. The issue is the number of planes has not been disclosed. If Binkov had to guess, that timetable likely includes all five low-rate production lots and possibly one or two full production lots, meaning at least 21 but possibly over 25 airframes. Years earlier, the Air Force mentioned 100 Raiders being the minimum number to be produced. But in 2020, in a congressional hearing, the Air Force Chief of Staff mentioned the need for 145 Raiders. That figure was repeated by Frank Kendall, US Air Force Secretary, in a hearing a year later. The US Air Force wants 220 bombers of all types by 2040. Previous goal was 175. Today, the Air Force operates just 145 bombers. Those figures alone tell us a lot about the future. The Air Force is trying to make sure it has as many deep strike assets as possible. The 220 figure would reach over halfway to the end Cold War numbers. All in all, today the Air Force has 18 B-2 bombers, which could maybe generate half a dozen missions per day during a prolonged period, and those may not be able to penetrate modern air defense networks, such as one China is building. If indeed the Air Force gets 145 Raiders, those may be able to generate 10 to 20 times as many missions in the same time frame, while enjoying greater mission success rates. Of course, those mission rates greatly depend on the weapons used as well. Here the B-21 may be somewhat short-changed compared to the B-2. It seems to have less space between its landing gear, so its bomb base may be narrower and less voluminous. Indeed, previously it was suggested the Air Force requires the B-21 to carry one mop-sized weapon, while the B-2 can carry two. While smaller, the B-21 is noticeably chunky in its middle section, understandably because the B-2 has more wingspan to make the curve to the middle fuselage more gradual. But the B-21 definitely has the required thickness for at least one deep bomb bay, and while it may not be able to carry 60,000 pounds worth of bombs like the B-2, it's still going to pack a punch. Of the weapons that it will likely use, we have to mention the future long-range standoff weapon that will replace the current nuclear-tipped cruise missiles. Once ready, around 2030, it will likely get integrated onto the B-21. There is also the joint air-to-surface standoff missile of the extended range variants. Those will also be part of its capability. ER variant is a proven weapon used for conventional tactical strikes. The XR model will offer an even longer range. But expensive high-tech missiles will also likely be integrated onto the radar, like the hypersonic attack cruise missile, a scramjet power missile small enough to be carried by an F-15. But the B-21 would be able to carry many, many more in a single sortie. Even though the missile's range may not be significant, radar stealth will likely allow the plane to fly into enemy air defenses, for example reach the Chinese coastline, and fire the missiles from there, reaching various targets deeper within China. Yet another weapon that's possible for the radar is the larger air-launched rapid response weapon. It has a hypersonic booster stage, which then releases a glider warhead. It has already been tested on the B-52, which may be the main user of the missile, as the radar is likely going to be more useful for doing penetrating strikes. Of course, various guided bombs are given for the B-21 as well, just like with the B-2. Simple JDAMs, or various winged variants, or new penetrator bombs, like the GBU-72 that's in development. All those are actually crucial for the B-21, because using unpowered guided bombs is much, much more affordable than using cruise missiles. US has something like 70 times more guided bombs than cruise missiles. While other platforms can fire cruise missiles, only stealthy planes could really leverage masses of US guided weapons. Against an adversary the size of China, cruise missiles alone would barely make a dent. Raider's future is of course still up in the air, but it does seem quite likely it will become the main US strike asset, utilizing advanced weapons and threatening potential adversaries. Of course, depending on the development of enemy sensor tech and sheer number of sensors, even radar stealth may not be enough in the long run. But if it is, it may allow it to reach deeper inside enemy air defenses than previously thought possible.